it's my great pleasure to announce also Tancho <laughs> uh, with on the topic digital outreach fever, building digital relationships over spamming people. A little bit about Dancho. <laughs> Dancho is uh, executive MBA CMGR CMC. Uh, He's a B2B outreach consultant and serial entrepreneur. His entrepreneurial spirit, spirit alone in her, his early childhood, at just 22 years uh, old, he was recognized as a global innovator for 2009. This award brought him speaking engagement at major events in Finland, India, Bra Brazil, and beyond. He started his career owning a marketing agency, then grew to manage a software company, and he is now the proud owner of uh, the management consultancy Bisbee Solution. As the founder uh, of Bisbee uh, Solution, he has helped over 450 companies, leading to the 40 under 40 awards. Dantra is the author of uh, the Amazon best-selling uh, book called Sweet Leads, speaker and a host of several business podcasts. Now, Dantra, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Really nice when someone else tells really nice stuff about you. So, hello, everybody. I think you've seen me for a whole day, and I'm actually the seventh speaker, so I know we had a long day. Uh, so far, we talked about so many things, from, from prospecting, from outreach, from sales enablement, from, from different angles. Uh, in these 20 minutes, I actually wanted to talk about relationship. I mean, what is sales about if it's not about building a long-term relationship? So from here, I wanted to say that most of us are looking at outreach like let's spam a lot of people. And maybe that was the motivation why we built this uh, summit in order to show that sales is not spamming. Sales is actually building the right relationship with the people and then take it from there if they are qualified, if they have the problem that you can solve into actually helping them. So in order to start, I'm going to actually show you a quick story. Imagine, I'm just checking, would you imagine we were having a long day, 12 speakers talking about prospecting and outreach, and you're in sales and your head is buzzing because all the great secrets that we've shared, and you're going out tonight and you're like, man, I need a drink. There's so many things to digest. And the question is, this is more for the male audience at this stage, is that would you actually go to the bar and you see a lot of girls actually in the bar and as excited as you are, the question is, would you actually go to, to the first girl that comes to you and bend your knee and actually propose? And it's a weird scenario, right? I mean, does it really happen in, in real case? Like, is it frequent to just go to the random bar and the first girl that comes in, in front of you and just you bend your knee and actually propose? It's a weird scenario, right? Well, if that's the, the weird scenario in the dating world, well, why is it actually different in sales? I mean, in sales, at the end of the day, we're doing the same thing. We are reaching out to potential prospects. We are engaging into some relationship. And then if we see that there is a potential, we then move it to the next stage. So hopefully the right scenario in the dating advice that I will provide you today, guys, is that, yeah, you go to a bar, you look at different people, you connect with some of them, you go to some of the girls, you start some general chit-chat. And that general chit-chat is, hi, what's your name? My name is Dancho, what's yours? And then you start some talking. And if the if the synergy is good, you move to the more complicated questions. What do you do? Where do you live? Or you, if, if you don't get there, that's it. There's no synergy. You continue to the next girl. In this case, next lead. As you go to the next girl, you start from scratch. What's your name? What's my name? You talk some general topics about the weather, uh, about sports. Okay, maybe sports is not really the, the right topic to, to discuss on, a, on the first date. But along the way, you start building trust and a relationship and down the road after multiple dates and X amount of time, you're ready to, to actually bend on your knee and actually propose. Uh, the reason why I wanted to share this story, guys, is that it sells, it should be the same. Uh, we, sh we don't want to go to a cold prospect and just bend our knee and like, hi, be my client. It doesn't work like that, especially the more expensive the services or the product that we are offering as a salespeople, the harder it gets. I mean, proposing is a big step. And so is actually selling a more expensive solution. So I was driven by this logic that in the dating advice, there are a lot of advices that I had to check. And I was curious, well, if this is not the case in the real scenario, 
why is it actually the same when it comes to the online world? So I Googled it up, like message examples of guys hitting on girls on Tinder. And I would definitely not recommend you to do that research. I wanted to find a few examples to show here how people are actually hitting online. You don't want to see those examples, honestly. It's not something that I'm recommending. But it is the same case. People in the physical world are behaving with relationship building and nurturing and long-term collaboration. And when it comes to online, people are straight, do you want to buy my stuff or not? And since I took the relationship angle in, in this presentation, I started searching and there is a pattern. Uh, there are five stages of a real relationship. So the first you start with the Roman stage, sparks all the way around, things are really good. Then you move to the power struggle stage. There are some knocks up and down, uh, struggles, who is the alpha, who is the beta. At some stage, you're moving to the stability where now you know each other. You know what you like, you know what the other side like, and you're ready to get to the commitment stage, popping up the, the question. And there is another fifth stage in the building of the relationship is the co-creation and bliss stage. But you see, this was a stage that five stages of building a relationship in the real world. And my question was that if this is the right way, why, why it's actually really different in, in sales? I mean, if we look at the sales process, people behave very differently. And I found a pattern here that I wanted to share with you guys is that salespeople behave differently depending whether it's a physical event or whether we're talking about a digital event. In the physical event, you have a salesperson with a nice shirt, with a nice jacket, goes to the meetings. Hi, my name is Dancho. What do you do? What I do with their synergy? They exchange some business cards. If not, thank you very much. You just continue to the next one. And then you next to the next one and to the next one and you collect leads. And after the event, then you start picking up, following up, LinkedIn, email, multiple channels, whatever works. But not at the stage where you go to the first person or you're just going to stand on a board and saying, hi, everybody, my name is Dancho, buy my stuff. It doesn't work like that in the, in the real world. The same person, when they actually go into the online world, they have like a shift. Shift, we are calling it as a digital outreach fever. So the same person that has the business etiquettes of shaking and talking about sales, when they get online, they start spamming. And they start spamming a lot, like sending a million emails with a success rate of 0 0.0001. They're still going to get a few meetings. So it is a success. But they forget that they're actually spamming 99.999% of the target audience. And it is a really big question. Why, why is this happening? So the key question that I've started looking at is that why is it really different online? Uh, I needed the story for the, for the dating. So now I can actually show you what is really happening online when it comes to sales. So I actually found several LinkedIn examples. I just took it from my profile because people are spamming me as well, unfortunately, but as you can see, hi, are you looking for SEO, link building, guest posting, content writing services? This is in the dating, like, hi, will you marry me? I don't even know the guy. He's immediately popping up the questions. And we're not talking about whether it's a LinkedIn channel, whether it's an email, whether it's a Facebook chat. It's just how we approach sales leads online. Do we start some chit chat, weather, sports, whatever, and then going as we get some feedback and some interest, we're moving to, to the next stage, or we're just trying to spam everybody. Hi, I sell this, do you actually need it? So this is actually going to the bar and, and actually proposing to, to the first girl. The second example that I had to share with you guys is like a huge LinkedIn message. And it's like, hi, I'm this, I'm selling this. For me in the dating world, this is like you're going to the first girl and like, Hi, my name is Dancho. Let me tell you about me. When I was nine, I was actually very nice. But then at 12, I started this. At 15, I, then I go to the university. It's like an endless story without any feedback. And would people do that in real world? Real world? Well, I really hope not. And there are other examples like, hi, my name is X. I'm actually expert in X, Y, and Z. And in the dating world, this is like, you just go to random girls and start giving your business cards. I'm a sales consultant. Here is my business card. I'm a sales consultant. Here is my business card. It doesn't really work like that in, in real world. And 
I have multiple examples, but I'm not going to go over of them. But the funny part is when I start seeing the same sequences, it's like exactly the same message from different people. And now I know even what is going to be the next message here because I've already received that sequence. And the funny part is not only on LinkedIn. It, it's, in, it's in Facebook. It's in everywhere, actually. So we constantly being spammed by people. And I don't think that everybody are aware of this. It's more like, well, that's how marketing and sales does online. You have an automation tool, you plug it in, you send a lot of messages. And from the speakers that we had today, everybody said automation can just put effort and emphasize on the tasks that you actually do in real life. You shouldn't use the automation differently rather than how you actually do it in real life. And this is maybe my biggest pain point because people behave differently online. And we've coined a term about this, is the digital outreach fever. And I even wrote a book on the subject because I was so fascinated by this. So what is the digital outreach fever? It's really the atypical, non-normal, spammy behavior of B2B salespeople that occur when they try to prospect leads online by using different outreach automation tools. But it's not just the automation tool, but they actually start treating people like a number, like a stats, statistics, and completely disregard any business etiquette and building business relationship. And this is where I think that with BSB, we try to solve the problem. Because when we've realized that you cannot just start reaching out to random people and saying, hi, would you like to buy my stuff? That's when we've actually built our outbound process. I wanted to give a very short introduction on why do you actually need the outbound process? Because I'm sure in the prospecting and outreach, we are all in the same field. But majority of people, when they consider outbound, they talk sales. It's like, yeah, with the outbound, X amount of prospect database, automation, messages, we do marketing qualified, sales qualified leads, clients. And from experience, we've used outbound for many different processes. Many times we needed partners and we did the outbound process. Uh, many times we needed suppliers. Even in HR, you can do the outbound process when you're targeting for specific positions. We have examples where we've used the outbound process for investors because many times clients actually need money. And the same outbound process can be done not just in sales. Yeah, you can use the outbound process in dating as well, but that's not the topic for, for today. So is the same outbound process for the prospecting and outreach. And in BSB, we actually have a, a six-step ZZ framework that we promote as it's the ultimate framework. And funny enough, it has a really marketing trick. We were saying ZZ framework, the last framework you will ever need for prospecting and outreach. Well, guess what? ZZ framework means that if you sort them alphabetically, we're at the bottom of, of the options. We should talk about it. But in, in short, there are six steps that we use in our promotion. The, the first three steps are in the planning where you need to define the ideal client profile. Everybody said that. You need a database who you're going to actually send and you need the messages. What are you going to send? So in the planning stage, those are the three steps. And then in the execution steps, we have the additional three steps, which is actually doing the outreach, nurturing and handling all the responses that you're going to get and do the optimization. It is a funny step that nobody uses it. And here is how it actually looks when you combine these six steps into a more, more vivid picture. You have the target audience, you build a database, you create the messages, you start moving the leads down the funnel. And the goal is to pass them through different uh, obstacles. At the first stage, you want to pass them through the response obstacle, then through the problem obstacle, then through the solution obstacle, then through the meeting obstacle, get them on a meeting and hopefully get a new client. And you do need the marketing support. Sales cannot work without marketing. Marketing can have marketing purposes, which is PR, branding, brand awareness, but it could also have sales support, case studies, social proof, testimonials, things that could really help the salespeople do a better sales. I will go short over the six steps because I really think that are important is that first part is defining your ideal client profile. In 99 case, in 99% of the cases, people are saying you need to look at the market. In order to find opportunities, you have to look at the market. Well, we're saying it differently. You need to start from your internal strengths. What are you good at? What are your features? What are your benefits? Because knowing that, then you can start looking at the market opportunities. And in B2C, it's really different because you have a female or male with age, with demographics and stuff. Well, in the B2B world, we're looking at industries, 
thermographics, geography, size, uh, different aspects, target positions. We are looking for specific people within the company. Are you targeting the CEO or the chief financial officer or else? And usually everybody stops with the research here and we are saying, well, you need another step. You really need to do your homework. Start understanding what kind of pains this position have within these companies. Do they have issues with marketing, with sales or any organizational? Because you need to engage into conversation. So similar to the dating example that I've shared you at the beginning, when you go to the bar, what's your type? What kind of girls are you looking for? What kind of history has shown the best results in history? So different aspect that you need to, to look at. And once you have that, then I can definitely recommend you LinkedIn because it is really a useful platform. You can easily just with Sales Navigator, like, well, I'm targeting accountants in the UK from one to 10 employees. I'm looking for the CEOs. Bam, you have a list. And that is really good to play, whether the list is too big or too small. The next stage is once you have, you know exactly who you're targeting, is building the database. I'm not going to get into details here, guys, because it's a database building preparation, set up the spreadsheet, find the right companies. Once you find the companies, find the right people. Once you have the find people, find the information. Of course, we have the lead automation, whatever can be automated or script. We have the quality control and we have the GDPR here as well. And once you have that, we get into the message sequences. Here is, I think that everybody mentioned it is just from a different angle. When it comes to message creation, from my perspective, it's very simple. It is who is your target audience? What do you want them to do? And then find all the messages in between. If you want them to come on a call, then you know what kind of messages. If you want them to respond, you need a different kind of messages. But the majority of the clients are making actually the mistake here. People are more oriented toward message one, a delay message two, a delay message three, and would you like to come on a call? And we joke on this. It's like, well, if I've ignored your three messages, why do you think that we would like to come on a call? So we switch the automation and the manual outreach into creating conversation starters. You need to prepare at home for different conversation starters. But once someone responds, you have to continue on a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You no longer need to use automation. And even on the message sequences, we have like a four psychology messages. And I will go quickly over them. Is that the first conversation starter is that we put is the duality. So when we talk with someone, it's like, hi, I actually talked with several consultants, co colleagues or consultants and opinion were divided. On the one hand, it's up to us to help as many companies during this post-crisis. Or, But on the other hand, companies have a limited budget. So as you see, the messages non salesy non pitchy it's a conversational and i think that few of the speakers before me were talking about how much your message should be spammy how much you go to a direct sales versus how much you need to start conversations well in our framework all we do is we start conversation you try with one message if it doesn't work then you try with a different message if it doesn't work you try but you never start talking about sales or marketing for the sake because at the end of the day you need to focus on how you can get responses before moving the relationship in the next stage. So yeah, in dating world, we can call them pickup lines, but you need messages to engage the conversation. It can be a simple, hi, I want to be part of your network or sophisticated messages, but you need messages to, to engage into the conversation. Uh, the other steps could be straightforward. With the outreach execution, we do the LinkedIn and email as a multi-channel approach where you configure the email, you set up the LinkedIn profile, you set up the messages, you, you launch the campaign. And the nurture and response handling is when people start responding. It's not like everybody are saying, yes, sign me up. I want to buy your stuff. Or people are like, don't bother me. I don't want to hear from you. There are many in between, especially when you don't try to pitch. It's more conversation starters with the ultimate goal of breaking the response obstacle. If they say, I'm curious, we won. We actually move them down the funnel. Then we continue with conversation until they realize they have a problem. No point jumping into a solution without the proper diagnostics. And once they have a problem is that this can work for me. Uh, if this can work for me, they mean that they are considering your solution. And I want the call is the last stage where they're ready to actually listen out to you. And the conversations and how many messages and how many channels, it really depends on the leads and on the target audience. 
And the last part that was the outreach campaign optimization is really optimizing it. Acceptance rate, invitation rate, delivery rate, engagement rate, how many inbound, how many outbound. That's the planning. You do A-B testing, you test on different angles, you try to optimize it. And this framework, we've tested it on quite a lot of companies and we've saw some, some fantastic results. And I wanted to walk you through the dating stage and the six steps, how it can be applied. But I think that I'm going to get too much into dating advice rather than actually selling advice. But the whole point that I wanted to share on, on this presentation is that don't be the spammy sales guy. Don't try to propose on the first day, whether it's on LinkedIn, on, on Instagram, or even on Tinder. Try to get into conversation. Try to see if there is a synergy. If there is, then you can move to the next stage and to the next stage and eventually book a day. It should be exactly the same with sales. Sales should not try to, to, to sell to people directly. Sell, primary goal should not be even called sales, if you ask me, but unfortunately, we have to call ourselves sales. Sales should be problem seekers. The job of the sales is to find potential companies that have the problem that we know how to solve. That's it. So the reach out from sales should be, hi, do you actually have this problem? It's not, do you want my services? And once you find companies that have the problem that you know how to solve, then it's worth engaging into the conversation. I should be wrapping up because I see I'm, I'm on the 20 minute mark. I wanted to share with you guys that the Sweet Leads is the book that we have that is harnessing the prospecting power of LinkedIn and email to get B2B meetings. Uh, you can find it on, on Amazon or everywhere, but you can also go to danchodimkov.com. There is a copy there. And lastly, I just wanted to add that we've just launched an online academy based on the same framework. And in the academy, we are covering, it's a prospecting hive. So it's a combination of multiple parts where we discuss about framework videos, about how the prospecting framework should work through the steps. Then we go through the how-to videos where we recorded a lot of videos on how you can step-by-step -step click and how to do it. And we were enriched with a knowledge library with a lot of additional articles and supporting templates. On top of that, we've created our online community now where we gather all prospecting people to discuss about sales. I can talk about sales forever. And we've added the B-Weekly group coaching because sometimes you need someone to ask directly and you cannot find the, the information. So with this, this was actually my, my last slide. Um, I wanted to, in conclusion, say, people, we're all in sales, at least the majority of us, but we shouldn't treat sales as a sales. It should be as an opportunity to find companies that have the problem that we know how to, to solve it. That's all I had for today, guys. Thank you, Dancho. We have several questions now, and I also want to uh, uh, point out that everybody can ask questions in, in the Q&A section or in the chat. Uh, the first question we received is, how can having video interviews and podcasts help us in the acquiring new clients? Well, podcast helps a lot, especially if you see that in the sales process, you don't want to sell something to people, but you want to start giving some free value. Uh, we've tried it as a tool and it gave some good results where we've started our own podcast, we're hosting it. And instead of going to a prospect, hi, would you like to buy our services? We're actually reaching out and like, hi, I actually are a B2B expert. I'm hosting a podcast. Would you be interested coming on the show? And you give them free value. You give them free exposure. They come into the podcast. And during that podcast, you still don't sell. You're actually trying to just understand what kind of problems they're having. Because if they don't have the problem that you're solving, that's it. At least you get to know a new person. If they have, then you can say, well, have you considered LinkedIn or email? Or can we actually help you with your problem? So it is a nice channel, especially when you add it on top of the funnel to reach to cold prospect. It significantly improves the, the reach out rate and the acceptance rate. Great. The next question is, uh, how much time does it does a salesperson usually need to pass the six step obstacles? It depends. And it really, this is like the most consultative answer that any consultant can say. It depends on too many variables, but as a general uh, rule of thumb is the more expensive the solution or the service that you're selling, the more time it takes. If you're selling five, 10 euro service, you don't need outreach. You can just put Facebook ads and then that's it. The moment when you start 500,000, several thousand euros, it is pretty straightforward process. The moment you go 20, 50, 100,000 euro service, 
then you need a lot then you need a lot of relationship building we, we even had an example where an invest a, a company from ibiza was looking for an investor of 20 plus million and then the, the sales process should be like indefinite in, in months even in years we have another question uh, from vasco who is responsible for qualifying the podcast generated lead so so that it moves forward to a sales call or if there are other steps who does that well with the podcast you don't need qualification because the the best part here is that since it's your podcast you're determining what will be the title who is, will be your target audience and then you start inviting them so it is already pre-qualified based on the, the demographic that you know. So with one of the podcasts that we have is B2B marketing and automation tools. The goal there was to create more partnership and collaborative opportunities for Bisbee. So when I reach out to marketing and sales automation, they are my target audience. I'm inviting them to present their solution. So in the qualification, it's really in the planning stage of the podcast regarding to what should be the title of the podcast? Who is the target audience in order to, to attract the right people to, to come on the show? Perfect. We have uh, two more questions. I hope we'll have time. Uh, this one is for the Academy. How can the Academy courses help companies scale bigger revenue? Why do young sales professionals need this weapon in their arsenal? Well, in short, we need to continue learning. And if I manage to convince people to stop spamming everybody around and start building the relationship building, it is a bit harder approach, but that's why it gives more results. Even one year after you had a good relationship with someone, they can come back to you. But if you just reach out to someone and, hi, would you like to buy my stuff? And they say, no, you've burned that bridge. What, what's the follow-up from there? Why not? Please buy. And with the Academy, what we were trying to achieve is capture all the knowledge that we have in BSB with the practical tools and frameworks and templates and everything, and just put it into one place. Hopefully, SDRs and salespeople will find it useful and start applying it because then uh, we, we did a voting last week just to, to close with this, uh, where in a group of 350 people in Albania, we've asked, well, how many of you people are actually getting a lot of spams? Everybody were raising their hands. How many of you actually are buying from spams? And nobody raised their hand. So nobody wants to receive spam. Nobody is buying from spam and nobody wants to send spam. So why are we in that vicious circle? Perfect. Uh, where they can get the more information about the academy? Um, we, we are trying not to call it an academy. We're trying to call it a prospecting hive, more like a academy plus community plus coaching. But if you go to hive.bsbsolution.com, uh, you, you will find more information about the, the courses, about the community, about everything. And I really hope that people will find it useful. We have more questions but we'll leave them for uh, the lobby um thank you dancho so much for your presentation and for the great uh, summit by now bye bye everybody